in the Bible, Genesis 126 says, let us make man in our image. My question is, who were the us and the our? Let's find out as we continue our study on the book of Hebrews. We're continuing our study on the book of Hebrews. Although this is a letter addressed to the Hebrews, it also applies to our day. Paul, inspired by God, helps us to better understand who Jesus is and what God has done to save a world under the curse of sin. In this series of lessons, we learn more about the promised son, the promise seed that God promised to Adam and Eve after they disobeyed God. This son would free us from the control of the serpent, Satan, who gained control of the world after Adam sinned. I pray that as we continue this series of lessons, we develop a great appreciation for what God has done for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, the promised seed. If you find these lessons helpful, click the like button and then click the share button and share them with your friends and family so they can benefit as well. Father, we appreciate you. We give you glory and honor and praise. We love you, O oh God. We adore you. We bow down and we worship you for you are worthy of our praise. We thank you for sending your son to save us. Help us accept and appreciate what you have done in our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Regarding the son, our key text is found in Hebrews 1, 2, and 3. But in these last days, he has spoke to us by his son, who he appointed heirs of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The title of this lesson is Through Whom He Made the Universe. Hebrew shows that God created the earth and the sky through or by Jesus. And here we find that Jesus upholds the worlds and keeps them running smoothly. It is his word that gives life to us everything. However, in Isaiah 44, 24, Isaiah 45, 18, and Nehemiah 9, 6 in the Old Testament, the Lord says that he is God alone. He created the world and he says he is the only God and there is no other. In contrast, the New Testament in Hebrews 1, two and three tells us the world was made by a son. Here is what it says in the Old Testament. Isaiah 44, 24, it says, thus says the Lord, your redeemer, the one who formed you from the womb, I the Lord am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone. And then Isaiah 45, 18 says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he is the God who formed the earth and made it. He established it and did not create it a waste place, but formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Nehemiah 9, 6. You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens, the heaven of heavens, and with all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that are in them. You give life to all of them, and the heavenly hosts bow down before you. Then in the New Testament, in Hebrews 1, 2, and 3, it says, has in the last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. How can this be? It appears here 
that the Old Testament and the New Testament writers do not agree about who really made the world. How should we understand these verses? This has led to some to conclude that Jesus was only a helper that God used to make everything. But that does not make sense. No, when you look at the what Paul says in Hebrews, first, Paul identifies Jesus as the one who made the earth and everything in it. This dispels the idea that Jesus was just a helper. He did not say he was a helper in the creation of the world. For Hebrews 1.10 says that Jesus is the Lord who created the earth and the heavens. It says, and you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Furthermore, Paul takes Psalms 102 verses 25 through 27, which talks about God forming the earth with his hands, and he applies these passages to Jesus. Let's look at Psalms 102, 25 to 27. It says, of old you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will grow old like a garment, like a cloth. You will change them and they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will not have no end. Second, in contrast, Hebrews 2.10 says that the universe, that is all the other planets and stars were created by or through the Father. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things and through whom all things in bringing many sons to glory to perfect the author of their salvation through suffering. This exact phrase is applied to Jesus in Hebrews 1, 2, which says, in the last days has spoken to us in, in his sons whom he appointed heirs of all things through whom also he made the world. So we can conclude that both the Father created and Jesus created. In other words, contrary to how we sometimes operate, the Father and the Son are in perfect agreement in their work and plans. This Bible truth is a wonderful mystery that is part of the Bible teaching about the Godhead. The Godhead is the three in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The us in Genesis 1.26 is the three in one Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit created. In simple human terms, but in exactly not like the work of the three in one Godhead, I put it this way. It's like having an entire household or company working in harmony with one another. What one does is a tribute to all. My son owns a natural hair care company called Caraveda. The, comp the people of the company perform various roles, but when the product is completed, it has the same name, Caraveda on it. The work is not attributed to one individual, it is attributed to Caraveda. There is only one Caraveda. Together, they are one. They work as one. They're in harmony with each other. Thus, they are seen as one. Thus, Jesus made everything, and so did God. But there is only one God who made everything. So this teaching shows us that Jesus is God, but it does not stop there. Hebrews 4.13 shows that Jesus as God is also our judge. It says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. His authority to rule and judge derives from the fact that God created 
all things and sustains the universe as in Isaiah 44, 24 through 28, which says, thus says the Lord, your redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretched out the heavens all along, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backwards and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers, who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited, to the cities of Judah, you shall be built, and I will raise up her waste places, who says to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up your rivers, who says to Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasures, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. So besides controlling everything, Jesus is judge. But also keep in mind that he, the Father and the Son and the Spirit operates as one. Jesus, according to Hebrews 1.3 and Colossians 1.17, it illustrates that Jesus also the sustains the universe. He holds everything together by his powerful command. Hebrews 1.3 says, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholds all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sit down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And Colossians 1.17 says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Knowing this, we do not have to worry about the actions of government. The White House cannot sustain this world. Only the leader of heaven and earth can do this mighty work. Every breath, every pump of our heart, and every second of li our lives comes from Jesus. He is the reason that all life starts and continues. I like what Paul in Acts 17, 28 says about Jesus. He says, for in him, we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. God is in control. Jesus is the one and through which we live and move and have our being. This same Jesus, God, died on the cross for our sins. This tells us something about Jesus' character. It tells me he is unselfish and self-denying. But now this leads to another question. If Jesus was God when he created the universe, why does it say in Hebrews 1, 5, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Find out more in part six. Today, I have begotten you. <laughs>